Hi, my name's Fiona. And I'm an addict. <sighs> I'm actually a female gamer. One of those rare creatures that you don't see too many of. Actually, that's completely wrong because 40% of serious gamers are women. No, I'm one of those rarer creatures. I'm a female gaming developer. Hmm. Latest Bureau of Statistics here in Australia states that 8.7% of game developers are women. No, no. I'm a rarer creature. I'm a female gaming educator. And we're lucky here that on this campus we have two such extremely rare creatures to educate the young people. But I am an addict. It's not like I had a choice. The year I was born, 1964, it started. William Fetter, now he was the guy who in 1960, which is before I was born, coined the term computer graphics. He was working for the Boeing Corporation and he developed the first 3D model of the human body. And he used it to work out the cockpit configuration so that the pilots could reach everything within the cockpit. Cool, right? Eh? A few years later, <laughs> I'm living on a little national park just outside of Canberra called Tibimbilla. Miles from anywhere. We didn't have a lot to do. This particular picture, it's very cute, isn't it? That's me, I'm three, okay? Was taken uh, for a little booklet called The Fauna and Flora of Australia. And as you can see, I'm labelled as the Eastern Grey Kangaroo. It's not like we had a lot to do out there in the bush, okay? We didn't do much at all. I'm playing fish with my brother here. He's cheating. <laughs> oh dear. Around about the same time that picture was taken, 1973, two gentlemen in America created the first 3D animated hand. Now, one of them was Ed Catmull and the other one was Fred Park. And they were working at the University of Utah. More on them in a minute. 1976, disaster. You know, that very same brother that you just saw, cheating at cards? He got Electronics Australia, he subscribed to it. He was an electronics nut at the age of about 13. And he, on the front page, May 1976, build your own computer game. And I remember the joy. He bought the little package in which it came in the mail and he opened up and this vibrant green circuit board came along and his future as an engineer was set. Mine as a 3D addict, was also said a gaming addict. Many, many hours of Pong eventuated. Poink, 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 poink. And that, and the fact that I'm, you know, into science fiction and fantasy, you can see where I'm going here. Okay. 1976, the same year, a movie came out called Future World, and that 3D animated hand that you saw was part of that movie. And Ed Cadmore and Fred Park managed to make an animated face for that movie. Ed Cadmore had always, always had a fascination with animation. He went on to become the head of Disney and Pixar, where he remains today. So 1976. He actually started off at Boeing, so I'm wondering whether he kind of had a chat to William Fettler along the way. 1978, here in Australia, there were no computer companies. But a little company down in Melbourne called Melbourne House were distributing games from the United States for the Australian audience. And they purchased the rights to make a video game of The Hobbit. Beam Software was the company who did the development. It was published by Melbourne House Software in 1982 on the Sinclair Spectrum. About two years later, they'd sold about a million copies of it. Really good. 1980 was the use of the first 3D graphics in a computer game, the Atari Battle Zone. The US military liked it so much that they used it to train their gunners on the Bradley fighting vehicle. Ed Rodberg, who was the programmer for the game, was absolutely incensed and refused to work on it, that project or any future projects for Atari under the condition that no more involvement with the US military. Around about the same time, in 1982, Tron was being developed. It was released in 1982. Who saw Tron? Some of us must have seen it, surely. Yes. I'm talking about the old one, not the new one. <laughs> 1976. I went to see it as a teenager. I was completely blown away by the computer graphics. Around about the same time, there was a New Zealander. His name was Roger Keating. 
And he developed about eight games in 81, 82 for the publishing platform SSI. Now, in the grand tradition of Australians claiming New Zealand as our, of, as our own, yeah, we'll claim it. <laughs> okay, because in 1983, Roger Keating started the first Australian gaming company. He actually started in 1982, but we won't mention that. Reach for the Stars was released, the first example of a 4X computer game, Explore, Expland, Exploit, Exterminate. Commodore 64, later a DOS port, very popular game. Second oldest computer company in Australia. Now remember that, because that'll come up later, I might test you. 1990, disaster. I purchased my first computer. Now, I did come to it a little bit late, because I was busy trying to be a writer at this stage. I did a degree in Bachelor of Writing. No, no, of course, all other activities went out the window. Hours. Simon Max hit the road. Day of the tentacle, need for speed. Had a force feedback, steering wheel, pedal, hours on this game. It's ridiculous. So, of course, completely addicted as I was to gaming and to computer graphics as a viewer, a voyeur, if you like. 1995 saw me at the University of Sydney studying guess it, design, science, and this is my first 3D model. If you like, pretty good for a beginner. Of course, you have to have the, you know, the TARDIS to go with the Dalek, and as you can see, the Sydney Opera House is in the background. Okay. 1996, I did a dissertation on the interactive narrative where I examined the narrative structure of a whole bunch of computer games. I was interested in sort of node-based narrative. Um, you might not recognize this. This is the Mech Warrior narrative structure. Yes, I know, very academic. Okay, 1998 saw me working for brilliant digital entertainment on such forgettable titles, Xena Warrior Princess, Ace Ventura. Let's move on. Warlords Battle Cry. I left S uh, BDE and joined, guess it, SSG. That was the company, the second oldest computer company, started by Roger Keating back in 1981, 82. Yes, I worked on Warlords Battle Cry, 60 character models, Animated a lot of them, modelled a lot of them, textured a lot of them, did the whole lot on them. That's the Dwarf Elf King. Next game I worked with uh, SSG was Reach for the Stars. There's a few little models there, just thought I'd pretty it up a little bit. Okay, yes, that's me. <laughs> warrior Elf, Warrior Queen Princess, defeating the demons. Art by Alastair Lockhart, who happens to work right here on this campus. Oh, did I mention Roger Keating also? Got him to work here. Fantastic for our gaming course. Warlords 4. It's the last game I worked with SSG and then I moved overseas. And while I was working with SSG, I worked on a paper um, for a book called Women Vision where I did a chapter called The Cybernetic Woman, Impossible Perfection. And being a bit of a feminist, I um, started out looking at the representation of women in computer games and ended up dis doing a survey on what were the things that affected women most when d playing computer games. And the thing that came up time and time again, it was one of the findings in my research, was that time is the thing that women don't have. We don't have time to spend 80 hours playing the game. We can kind of get it in 20 minutes naps, five minutes naps. We don't have time to spend hours and hours gaming. Now, I think this has been validated, if you like, by the rise of the social gaming on the iPhones and on the, on the Android phones, and that people can actually sit there and play games for five minutes, put it down and get on with it. So, 2001, I was in the Uni in United Kingdom, and I, I got a job as a producer for serious games, educational games. This is where my addiction to education started. God help me, my addictions. Right, um, and we managed to win uh, Grand Prix Japan, Royal T Television Society, Educational Television Awards for Lifelong Learning and Multimedia. My God, could they make those titles shorter? 2005, Webby Award finalist uh, for things like the Geology Cool Clip. This was the one that won the, uh, the uh, Royal Academy Award, and I did the interactive on how to calculate the astronomical unit. Fascinating stuff related to our previous speaker, as you can see. At the same time, I was trying to hold down a job at the Open University BBC, working 40 hours a week, gaming 20 hours a week, travelling to work three hours a day, you know, up the times. I didn't have a lot of time for anything else. So I was online one day with uh, World of Warcraft um, and I had this dreadful, dreadful pain in my stomach and I'm going, oh, this, this is no good. And I'm saying to my guys online, you know, I think I have to go to hospital now. And they said, gee, Fiona, why do you need to go to hospital? Because I'm having a baby. 
Yes, that kind of put a sudden halt to my gaming aspirations. Now time started to become a real issue. I had other things to worry about. So as all new mothers do, I uh, moved to Australia and I started doing a PhD. Doesn't everybody? Of course, yes. Now I don't know whether you know anything about a PhD, but the first year of a PhD is spent working out what you're gonna do for the next two years. And at the end of the first year, you do a little presentation where you can either fail outright, get out of here, goodbye, nice knowing you. You can fail with emendations or you can pass. Well, I failed with emendations because I was busy doing this. Yes, an animation of a fish. I was quite addicted to it and I couldn't let it alone to the detriment of my studies. And around about the same time, I also picked up a job at the Northern Sydney Institute where I uh, teach 3D, sadly. So they were feeding my addiction. I'll just leave it go into the cloud. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I actually managed to graduate. It was a long haul, as one does. Uh, got the PhD, very nice, thank you very much, move on. So these days, thanks for giving me the job here. Really nice, but you know, you're not helping. Every day I'm now working in 3D. I've got a, such amazing students like William Hong, Dom Park, Leo Tran, Johnny Rubenstein, Adrian Panousis. Finished the PhD, got time on my hands, yeah, right. Of course, I'm doing an educational blog on how to do gaming, how to do 3D, and I've also got a Facebook page on gaming in the Australian gaming community. Right, so join me, it's all good. So, the end of my journey. What do we take on from this? What do we take away from a life of gaming and addictions? My advice to those who are studying, to those who are living their lives, to those who are striving to excel is keep on going. Finish what you're doing. Keep that fire in the belly and don't give up. Be true to your addictions. Well, addiction's probably the wrong word and I apologize to those who have a serious addiction, but be true to your passions. And the last thing that I'd like to say is help others because in helping others, you help yourself.